chapter. Today, inshallah, we'll continue solving uh, topic one, answer, measurement and uncertainty, practice uh, problems. We reach uh, till question 12 from your uh, document. So the question says, here you have a graph of distance versus time. A radio wave of wavelength is incident on a conductor. And this graph shows the variation between wavelength lambda and the distance D traveled inside the conductor. Part of the question suggests why it's unlikely that the relationship between D and lambda is linear. Unlike there, it's not linear. To be linear, it has to be. It has to pass through the origin, and I should get a straight line, and the straight line should pass through all the error bars. If I draw a relationship, the relationship it won't be linear. It won't be curved. Okay, and it won't pass through the origin. That's why it's not. It's not a linear relationship. OK, part B of the question for lambda equals 5 times 10 to the power 5 meter. Calculate the fractional uncertainty in the distance D. Now <clears throat> I have lambda lambda here. I have 10 to the power 5 meter and a distance in centimeter. So if I want 5 times 10 to the power 5, I have to write this one in terms of 10 to the power 6 because here the unit it's lambda 10 to the power 6. So this number here, I have 5 times 10 to the power 5 times 10 divided by 10. What did I do? I multiply, I divide at the same time by 10. It's nothing. It's because 10 over 10 is 1. Now, this is 10 to the power 5 and 10 to the power 1. It will give me same phase. You add the power. So this one is 10 to the power 6. And 5 divided by 10, it will give me 0.5 times 10 to the power 6 times 10 to the power 6 meter. So lambda at lambda equal 0.5 times 10 to the power 6 meter, I will go and read the distance. 0.5 is here. This is 0.5. So this value here, this value here, how much? Each is between 0.2 and 0. It's 5. So if I divide 0.2 divided by 5, it will give me point oh four so each square up in this direction you give me point four so this value here it's around it's a little bit less because this value here is point thirty six is less than point thirty six is point thirty five so d d is point thirty thirty five centimeter centimeter now the question is calculate the fractional uncertainty in d calculate the fractional uncertainty fractional uncertainty is the uncertainty the, the value of uh, absolute uncertainty divided by d now, the absolute uncertainty is the length of the error bar. The length of the error bar here, this one from here till here, it's more than one square. We said the square is 0.04. It's a little bit above 0.04, so it is around 0.05 divided by the original value here, this value, which is 0.35, original value for D, and this will give me 0.48. This is the fractional uncertainty. Now, second part of the question, 
calculate the percentage uncertainty in D squared. Percentage uncertainty, okay, it's the same fraction uncertainty as since I have power, you multiply by two, you get the power out. So I need the fraction uncertainty will be two, two times the uncertainty, uncertainty in D, fraction uncertainty in D. And this one from the previous part of the question, uh, previous section of the question, it was 0. 0.14, and this will give me 0. 0.28. This is the uh, fractional uncertainty. Now, same question now, D. D. You have a student, the student state that the equation of the line of best fit. Here I have a relationship between D square in centimeter square and wavelength lambda. He give us the equation of this straight line. This is the equation. So the equation of the straight line, this one. D square equal A plus B times lambda. Now remember the equation of a straight line Y equals M x plus b. So d squared would represent y axis equal the slope to b lambda is x axis plus b is a y intercept. So this is the equation d squared equals b lambda plus a. So a is y intercept. A is y intercept. So if I continue with the ruler, use a ruler, okay? So if I continue this line here, it will be intersect here. So this is would represent A. So A, it's y intercept. Y intercept. So what will be the fundamental state, the fundamental SI unit? for the constant A and the constant D. Since A represents Y intercept, so it is unit will be the same unit as this Y axis, C meter squared. Now, C meter, centimeter squared, centimeter squared converted to SI unit, SI unit will be meter squared. So this is the answer. How about B? B will represent the slope of the gradient. So the slope will be raised over run, rise over run, which means the slope rise over run, which means centimeter square. Centimeter square in SI unit we said is meter square. So meter square divided by run is lambda, is lambda, the unit for lambda is meter. Meter squared divided by meter, it will give me meter. This is by definition this, of this law. Okay, now the last section of the question, determine the distance traveled inside the conductor by very high frequency. Very high frequency, <clears throat> very high frequency. Now, so we know frequency is opposite to wavelength because the velocity equals lambda times f. If lambda, if the frequency is high, wavelength should be low, shorter. When you multiply them together to give you the same value for the speed here, if it's light, we're talking about electromagnetic wave, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power 8. So if I increase the frequency, I should decrease the wavelength, which means the shortest, the shortest wavelength will be at the intercept. So if I draw a curve, I will see where the curve intercept here at the zero, intercept with Y axis, this value will give me the value of distance traveled inside the conductor by very high speed. So at 
lambda equals zero or the shortest lambda d will equal 0.2 centimeter converted to meter to give me 0.2 times 10 to the power negative 2 meter. Here I use the first graph. Can I use the second graph? Yes, I can use the second graph. Use the ruler and draw a straight line. See where the straight line will enter uh, where cut the y axis. This will be the value. The value of here I have was but, but careful because here I have this square. So here we said each square up it's 0.04. So it will cut y axis at d square equal 0.04 centimeter square. That means 0.04 from centimeter to meter, 10 to the power negative 2. Square it. So 10 to the power negative 4 meter square. This is d square. I need d. It will be square root of this value, which will give me the same answer as we've got before, which is 0.2 times 10 to the power negative 2. That's it. We'll solve, inshallah, next, uh, next class, the second question, which is question 13 from your...